All right, Guardians, with Lightfall fast approaching in just a matter of days, Bungie and Destiny 2 decided to tease us with just a little bit more with a brand new video showcasing some of the weapons and gear that Guardians can expect to look forward to as we finally dive into Niamuna. This video will be an in-depth look and discussion on some of the main details discussed in the video, as well as some awesome changes to the Lightfall website once this video was released. If you enjoyed this video and look forward to more Destiny content, be sure to like, subscribe, and of course, turn on those notifications to know when my next Destiny video will be live. The first new weapon introduced in the video was the Final Warning Sidearm, which bears a small but similar aesthetic to the Liminal Vigil currently available in the game, but with a sleek new Neopop design. This weapon showcases a brand new Charge Tracking Rounds perk with the video showing Strand Projectiles honing in on enemy Vex in the same fashion that we see Witch Queen's Osteo Striga use projectiles that also perform the same action or the Missile Projectiles on the new Quicksilver Storm. What's really great about this is we're continuing to see Bungie pushing brand new ways of weaponry becoming much more explorative than the traditional FPS that Destiny has largely been known for. Now with that being said, I'm kind of curious how the balance of this weapon will be in a playlist such as Crucible, where we saw Quicksilver's Storm be quickly disabled for multiple weeks due to unintended outcomes. Let's hope Final Warning doesn't follow the same path or break the game as much as Telesto does. Deterministic Chaos is the next weapon introduced in the video and features a heavy machine gun with self-defined rhythmic debuffs, utilizing Void's subclass debuffs over time. The fourth shot of the gun weakens enemies while the 16th shot gives enemies a volatile debuff. We've never seen any weapon in Destiny perform this kind of pursuit before, and I'm honestly left with a few questions. Do shots have to connect consecutively in order to apply the rhythmic debuff, or can I simply shoot into the air so long as the 4th and 16th shots connect debuffs as intended? Based on the video, we really don't have a whole lot of clarity as to what the actual answer is, so we're just going to have to wait to see until Lightfall releases in order to have a more deterministic answer. Eh? eh you see what I did there, right? You see what I did there? Anyways. Before seeing a new Neopop-inspired Lightfall weapon, Destiny appears to be bringing back a classic weapon from Year 2, which is the Nameless Midnight Scout Rifle. As someone who utilizes scouts heavily in all playlist activities, scouts have become an essential favorite for their damage output, their champion stunning abilities, and especially their lethality at range in the Crucible playlist. Seeing the reintroduction of Nameless Midnight leads the safe assumption that we may see a decent assortment of returning weapons from years prior with updated perks and a whole new way to build them into our Guardian loadouts. I do know that some Guardians would likely be understandably upset if Destiny decided to reintroduce weapons instead of creating new ones, but as a humble Guardian would say, something really is better than nothing. Next up, it does appear that the Threadrunner Hunters have been greatly given the spotlight with the introduction of a brand new exotic helmet titled the Seared Arachnes Facade, try saying that three times fast, which uses the grapple function of the new strand subclass where it grants the hunter a new woven male character buff. I wouldn't necessarily call it an overshield just yet as we don't know if this is really the case, but what it does grant is flinch resistance where we see hunters in the video using a brand new lambent sniper rifle against an enemy titan, receiving damage, and then returning their reticle to their original spot. If I had to make any educated guesses, this is probably going to be extremely useful for Crucible players who rely heavily on ADS-focused weaponry such as scouts, pulses, hand cannons, and especially sniper rifles where flinch is already a justifiable problem. How much of this is going to be a benefit that this exotic will provide still kind of remains to be seen. Berserker Titans are next up on the list of gear that we are introduced to with the brand new Abeyant Leap exotic legs. Not to be confused with the arm pieces which are part of the Apocalypse gear that we are going to obtain in Lightfall. These legs are going to provide Titan players with a huge burst of strand energy, sending strand lashes hurling forward against enemies in front of them as the Titan sends down their rally barricade. At first glance, I can see that this is extremely powerful in PvE as it essentially demobilizes hordes of enemies in one blow. But my concern comes from how powerful this exotic could really be in Crucible. If this is something that one taps Guardians and contains a very quick intrinsic cooldown, I could easily see many Guardians running around popping barricades to send Strand hurling against enemy Guardians. We also don't know if this perk only applies to Rally Barricades or both versions for that matter, so we're going to have to wait to check once this exotic is obtained. Now, going back to weapons, the Quicksilver Storm does appear to be getting a huge upgrade to its arsenal with the introduction of a brand new Catalyst releasing in Lightfall, granting users the ability to create Strand Tangles on kills with the weapon's grenade secondary fire mode. 
And essentially, this spawns a throwable projectile that is meant to complement the weapon use. This could be massively popular PvE opportunity for players who utilize auto-loading weaponry, where they could still provide critical damage against enemies while avoiding reload times, though I could imagine that this is very situation specific and I'm unsure if this catalyst will have its place in high intensity firefights where enemy damage is solely focused on guardians who may not be running full resistance or woven mail from strand. We'll have to see how powerful this catalyst will be once we finally get our hands on it once Lightfall releases. Our last armor focus is meant for Warlocks, and staying true to the Broodweaver subclass title, the Swarmer's exotic legs bring build crafting to the forefront, where the destruction of Strand Tangles will spawn new Threadling creatures that seek out and attack enemies in range. This is unlike anything we have ever seen before, as we're now seeing weaponry and subclasses bring semi-sentience into the mix in an entirely new way to play the game. For those PvP players, I'm kind of curious if Strand and Tangle are viable in the Crucible playlist, where spawning Threadlings would be akin to the Colony Exotic Heavy Grenade Launcher, which shoots out robotic projectiles. When the Colony first arrived in Destiny 2, it heavily dominated Crucible, no pun intended. And last but not least, we come to the last weapon showcased in the video, and that is the Winter Bite Stasis Glaive that conveniently began trending on Twitter as soon as this video dropped. Using this glaive's firing method produces a floating stasis orb that freezes enemies on contact, which can then be shattered afterwards and creating the oh-so-lovable stasis chain reaction that we've known and seen in Destiny to date. For players looking to expand their build crafting prowess with stasis, this weapon is very likely to be a primary piece in your arsenal, as many stasis fragments can be triggered simultaneously with this weapon's use for sure. In regard to Crucible, however, I could easily see this weapon being extremely overbearing if it contains the opportunity to deal damage and freeze guardians on immediate contact. This would lead me to believe that we may likely see a heavy use of this glaive in Crucible for at least a small moment after Lightfall's launch. And although we don't have a specific video on the new armor set, we do have the new Apocalypse set coming into Lightfall, and it looks absolutely insane. There's not much more that we know about it other than we are going to be receiving this armor set in Lightfall, and I cannot wait to get my hands on it. And as a final piece of information, we have two new things that have just happened to the Lightfall website for Bungie.net. We have the Terminal Overload, which is going to be a brand new six-player matchmade activity, as well as a new description of the raid where we have a haunting presence that we now have to confront as an ancient threat. We're just going to have to look forward to in Lightfall. Overall, I'm extremely cautiously optimistic for what Destiny has in store for us with Lightfall fast approaching. Although the tease for this video made it sound like we're getting significantly more information on weapons and gear, we were only provided a small taste of what to expect, and this is likely Bungie trying to keep Lightfall under wraps until closer to the launch date. We also don't have definitive answers on what to expect with Crucible coming up just yet. However, I have no doubt that we'll probably get a deeper dive into what to expect with Crucible in the next coming weeks. Thank you so much for watching this video, and if you enjoy the content, please, of course, like, comment, subscribe, and of course, turn on those notifications to know when my next video is going to be live. Thank you for being the reason I get to do what I do, because without you guys, I could not do it, and I look forward to seeing you all on Niamuna. Until the next video, Guardians, game on.